What's going on guys? It is June 23rd, 2023, uh, Friday. So in this video, we have a bad leaky 7 8 service valve. It's on a train unit, so it's like a, one of those quarter turn ball valves. So we're gonna uh, take that valve out and we're gonna put a new one in. And we're gonna do everything that goes along with that as far as uh, recovering refrigerant, raising in, pressure test, and vacuum. So let's get going. All right, we got a leaky ball valve here, train unit. So we're recovering the refrigerant right now and we're gonna get that valve changed out today. I'm starting off by just pumping liquid directly into the tank. So we'll do that, see it moving. We'll do that until we can't do it anymore. Then we'll just recover the rest. stem here is leaking. She's all leaking. All right, now we got the recovery unit hooked up and we're gonna pump the rest of it out of there. This thing holds a ton of refrigerant. 13 pounds, nine ounces on the data plate. So realistically it probably holds between 14 and 15 pounds. All right, we got it recovered down to zero. <clears throat> now I got the braze joints on the valve cleaned up. Now I'm gonna unsweat this valve and uh, so we can get the new one in. No, I can hold it. Yeah. Pulled out of there. There it is. That baby stop. All right, this is our old valve. We do have to get this bracket off here, but. The new one is actually very similar. Right here. So, the cap's a little different, but everything else is pretty much the same. So, pretty good. got this side soldered in and I wanted to stop to cool this down because I don't want to get this valve too too hot and smoke what's inside of it so this side's brazed looks pretty good and then I'm gonna come around and do this side here and get that side brazed in Checking this with the mirror now. I don't know if you guys can see that, but my backside looks pretty good. Of course, we're going to pressure test it. That looks uh, looking pretty good. All right, doing a leak test now. Got my valve core removers hooked up. Everything is looking good. We'll fill her up to about 300. Yeah, 250, 300, we'll see. And we'll let her sit for a while. All right, we got our 
vacuum going now. Just turned it on. We'll let her eat for a while. We're going gas ballast open until we get down pretty low. Then we'll shut the gas ballast. Conserve our oil. Once it gets down to around 1,500, 1,000 or so, we'll shut that gas ballast. All right, we just closed our gas ballast. We're down to about 1120 now. We're gonna let her pull for a while. All right, we've been pulling for a while now and we've been hanging around 660, in the 660s for a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the oil in my vacuum pump. And you can do that in this while it's running. I've showed this before in other videos, but it's a pretty sweet deal. So all we're going to do is we're going to open the valve here. Let it drain out. Close the valve. Now take our new oil. these pumps they're very nice all right and our oil has changed all right we are down to about 500 i think i'll be happy with this vacuum we'll go ahead and charge her up and uh get her back up and running i might let it pull a few more minutes because it it is just under 500 so Not too bad. It's a big system, and it's uh, it's it's older too. It's from 2010, 2012. What is this? Uh, 2010. So it is uh, 13 years old. So I'd I'd be happy with a 480 a 480 uh, vacuum. I'm good with that. All right, we're adding our refrigerant now. Like I said, it holds, holding charge is 13.9, but we'll see what it really holds. Contactor just pulled in because the pressure switch opened. All right, we'll open this now. We'll dump it in until it stops taking it, and then we'll start it. All right, it's taking about nine pounds, five ounces. I got the rest of my stuff hooked up. We'll go ahead and start this baby up. Go ahead and put the trim charge in her. vapor side put in about a pound at a time until we reach 13 pounds 9 ounces and then we'll trim it off from there all right we got just over 13 pounds well almost 14 at this point but we're looking for eight degrees of sub cooling I don't know if we satisfied or what we just cut off let's see all right, it took 14 pounds, eight ounces. We're right at eight degrees of subcooling. I really wish this suction line temperature was a little lower. It might end up coming down, but we'll see. Everything else is looking good though. 14 degrees of superheat is right in line. I like these readings. I like everything but that suction line temperature, but I think it's running pretty good. All right, that went about as smooth as we wanted it to go. So everything went, went pretty good there. I wish I had a little bit lower suction line temperature, but uh, the unit's running pretty good. So 
uh, sub, sub cooling is right what the data plate says and uh, superheat looked like it was in line too so um, not, not too worried about that suction line temperature but uh, next we're gonna go uh, look at a unit it's a rooftop unit that uh, has multiple issues multiple issues so they were even in the description to the service call they said uh, the unit's 10 years old and they're hoping to get it fixed so they don't have to replace it but I got bad news for them so take a look all right we got a unit here with no cooling we have the fan running but no compressor so we'll check some stuff on it see if we have any flash codes on the board and then we do Out how many flash codes we got? One, two, nine. We got a nine flash, which corresponds to ignition control lockout, ignition control failure, limit trip. Okay, well, that's going to be on the furnace side, so I guess it will lock the whole system out if it goes into an ignition lockout, it'll even lock out the air conditioning. So let's, let's get the meter out. We'll test, see if we have a Y call for start. Okay, we do have a call for cooling. So I opened up the, the furnace, the gas heat uh, compartment, and our control board here has a heartbeat, which is normal operation. So that's pretty weird. That's pretty, that's definitely weird. So we'll have to see if we have any other limit switches in the circuit. We'll check these rollout switches, make sure all that's good. But so far we got pretty odd situation here. We have a rollout switch up here. We'll just click that in just to make sure. Nope, that's not bad. That's not open. All right, let's do some more poking around. All right, we reset power and we still have this nine flash code. So we have a limit switch open somewhere. We have an active limit switch open. And I don't think it's in where the furnace is because we have a normal operation there. But we'll still check the rollout switch and that type of stuff. Just to see. So, yep, we have a we have an active limit switch open somewhere. Alright, it took a lot of wire tracing out, but our we have a bus terminal in here that sends R out to our different switches. So one of the switches leaves here and it goes directly to our limit switch right there. And then it comes out of that limit switch, goes to this limit switch, ends up hitting this board because it, it goes into this board so you can, so it can see what fault happens. So, so it can tell you which limit switch opened and which one closed. Now I bypassed this one because look how corroded this is. I thought maybe we weren't making a good connection here. So I just bypassed that uh, in the meantime so I could further troubleshoot. Well, it goes through those switches, hits this board, comes out of this board, and basically brings a 24 volt signal to this terminal right here. I have 24 volts on this, on this terminal. So which means all the limit switches are closed and I'm putting 24 volts back to the board, but yet, I am still in a limit switch fault. So I'm pretty certain that our board is bad. It's uh, whatever relay makes connection to tell the, the board that it's that the limit switches are open has went up, I do believe. So we're gonna have to get a new board for this one. I am I am going to jump out the air conditioning just to see if it works. But yeah, we're probably gonna have to get a new new board for this guy. Oh, and a new limit switch because this is pretty corroded. All right, well, once I went to go jump out the air conditioning, I've noticed we have a bad condenser motor too. Check it out. The compressor started, but the fan is not. It did try to start a minute ago. It's not even trying now. Sounds like the compressor was actually sounding weird too. Some sort of clicking noise going on with it. 
All right, it just keeps getting better and better with this unit. So we have no refrigerant at all, which is weird because our, the, see, pushing in the Schrader, no hissing. The error we were getting was a limit switch error. It has a, I was thinking, well, maybe that's why I was in a limit error, but no, it's got a separate flash code for low pressure compressor lockout. That's five flashes. We were getting nine flashes, the ignition control lockout. So that's where, how I was diagnosing it. But I wanted to jump out the compressor to see if the air conditioning would work. And we found for one, the condenser motor is bad. And for two, it's out of refrigerant. And if you look back in there, you see all that oil? The bottom of there? Yep, that coil's leaking. I don't know if this thing's even worth fixing because we'll need a condenser coil for it. We need a motor for it. We need a limit switch, a board, plus all the refrigerant and labor, filter dryer, all the stuff involved with putting a coil in it. This unit is really not even that old. It's from 2012. Let me zoom out for you. It's from 2012. So the unit is only 11 years old, but this thing has got a boatload of issues. It's probably better just to replace this thing, but we're gonna give the customer options and let them make the decision. So, yep, this thing's in rough shape. Rough shape for sure. And to top it all off, we have a crack in our heat exchanger. You see it right here? Yep, that is a hole. It's a pretty deep, it, it failed right there at the seam. This unit is in rough shape. Wish I would have done all this before I started chasing down shorts. Here's another one. It's another crack right there. Yep, I wish I would have done this before I started chasing down limit switches, but <laughs> yeah, you got sometimes you do what you got to do. Yeah, she's in rough shape. Multiple failures on this unit. We have a leaky condenser coil, bad condenser motor, crack heat exchanger, bad control board. York actually calls it the simplicity board. Uh, bad uh, high limit switch. Um, and that's just right off the top of my head. That's just the stuff that I found today. After we get, if we were to get it all fixed up, there could be more wrong. I mean, but that's five things right off the bat. So it's safe to say this unit, this unit's junk. <laughs> so we will, um, we're not going to give them a price to fix this unit unless they really ask for it. We're going to tell them, look, you got to replace this thing. So, I mean, they would have, they would have at least two thirds the price of a new unit fixing this thing because it's not under warranty. So they're going to have to buy the coil, buy the heat exchanger, buy the motor and all the refrigerant and all the parts and pieces that go along with replacing the heat exchanger. So basically they'd have a, almost a whole new unit anyway. <laughs> the compressor would be good. And uh, the compressor did run. I, I did test that. So uh, the compressor did run. So at least they wouldn't have to put a compressor in it. But yeah, it's in bad shape. So they got a quote for a new unit incoming. So, all right guys. Well, I hope you liked today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. So it really helps me out. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be it for this one. And I uh, hope everybody has a good weekend. Catch you guys on the next one.